Humans have been hunter-gatherers since prehistoric times, harvesting food from land and sea. At sea, we've made this transition over the ages to agriculture to more reliably feed our growing population. But at sea, we haven't made that change. We are still fishing like we're hunter-gatherers, only with new technology and scale. Now, by 2050, well within the lifetime of most of you in this room, by 2050, just 30 years from now, our population is set to be 10 billion. That's 3 billion more mouths to feed than we have currently. To add to the challenge, we're going to need our, to feed ourselves with the looming and uncertain impacts of climate change on food production. Top that with a rising middle class worldwide that's going to expect to eat more animal protein like we enjoy in the US. How are we going to feed all these additional people? Will it be with more efficient farming, more fishing, or do we need to consider an entirely different other form of food production? Now, modern agriculture has been hugely successful at boosting crop yields and production, but it's using up about 70% of our water, freshwater resources already and half of our habitable land. We threaten unique conservation lands and special places if we develop any more. And even if we did, even if we plowed up paradise and applied our most modern agricultural technologies, it would still not be enough. Because in order to feed our growing population come mid-century, we would need to discover and develop new agricultural lands equivalent to a continent, another additional continental United States. Well, the magical appearance of a new continent is not likely to happen. I think we can all recognize that. What's our alternative? On land, we transitioned from hunting and gathering to agriculture and animal husbandry. And in that transition, we increase the yield of protein and calories per acre by more than 100-fold. What if we applied that transition to the oceans that cover 70% of our planet? If we applied our know-how to better take advantage of all the ocean has to offer, we could develop and harvest all the protein and calories we would need in an area as small as the coastal New England, and New York State, you know, spread around the globe, of course. So you might ask yourself, what, Scott? How on earth, in that small space of the ocean, can we grow all the food we're going to need? And it's marine aquaculture. Farming the oceans is our best and most sustainable solution. Now, rather than simply harvesting wild fish from the oceans, as we have been doing, Aquaculture is more akin to agriculture. It involves planting and raising and harvesting what we have planted. We've learned from experience to model aquaculture after sustainable, organic, local agriculture. Low input, low impact, sustainable yield is the name of the game. In fact, marine aquaculture outperforms land-based livestock by several different metrics. Let me name a few here. Land use and freshwater requirements for farm fish are about one-tenth of what's required for beef. The feed-in to flesh-out ratio for farm salmon is about one-to-one, one, on par with or even better than chicken, and way better than the ten-to-one required for beef. And the carbon footprint for beef is more than ten times it is for farm salmon. Antibiotic use in fish farming has dropped to nearly nil due to advances in fish vaccines and better animal husbandry. It's much lower than all these other farmed animals. Now, I feel pretty good about eating farmed salmon, and I'll go order it at my local restaurant and seafood market, but there's still a problem. This salmon comes from farms thousands of miles away. In fact, 85% of our seafood comes from other countries. 
and most of it, as you see in red here, is farmed. Globally, aquaculture is one of the fastest growing sectors of food production, growing at about 5 to 10 percent per year, and it has been for decades. It's especially expanding in coastal New Zealand, Norway, Chile, China, and other Southeast Asian countries, countries that are decades ahead of the U.S. In the U.S., we are missing out on this tremendous economic opportunity. In addition to farmed fish, there are forms of marine aquaculture that are tremendously sustainable. And I name them here shellfish, mussels, scallops, oysters and clams, and seaweeds. These shellfish and seaweeds benefit the environment, but more importantly, you're probably wondering, what do you mean? He means I should be eating this stuff? You're probably going, huh? Or yuck, maybe? But bear with me. Because remember that back in 1900, chicken was a luxury to consume when lobsters were food for the poor and prisoners. And who remembers eating avocados or kale 40 years ago? <laughs> the point is that diets change like fashions, driven by supply and demand and innovations. Today, we're seeing innovative food processing technologists and new recipes adapt and integrate these new ingredients. They're more sustainable ingredients. So in addition to feeding us, shellfish and seaweed farms actually benefit the environment. The farm structures themselves provide important habitat for wild fish. The farms themselves require no inputs, no arable land, no fresh water, no pesticides or fertilizers, and no feed. These ocean crops grow naturally in the water, fueled by the sun, while they filter and, and absorb nutrients that, if they otherwise accumulated, might cause pollution. And they absorb carbon rather than emitting it like beef. Look at how shellfish <coughs> stack up against all these other farmed animals. They are so much better. And this is just the kind of food production we need, really low impact food production we're going to need to mitigate climate change and feed our future generations. And it's also why more and more environmental organizations like the World Wildlife Fund and the Nature Conservancy actively champion shellfish and seaweed farming. Now, perhaps less familiar to you are farmed seaweeds, which are consumed in a variety of markets around the world. It's an $11 billion industry for such traditional uses as food additives, cosmetics, pharmaceuticals, sushi, and other edible dried seaweed products. Most of the seaweeds are, cons are farmed overseas, like you'll see in this picture here in Asia, but they're just as suitable to growing along our extensive coastlines, like this farm in Maine. Farm seaweeds, instead of corn, can be the raw materials for carbon-neutral biofuels and animal feeds. And in so doing, we could free up a lot of cornfields for growing food we're going to need for our additional and growing population. Now, most of the seaweeds and shellfish that we consume are farmed, but it's farmed overseas. There's a tremendous opportunity here in the U.S. to join this international blue revolution in food production. Because marine aquaculture, when you weigh all the pros and cons, it's really our only viable solution for meeting our growing food needs in the coming 30 years. It's the only environmentally responsible way we can do it when you weigh all these climate change factors in as well. And in the US, we have the luxury of the lar one of the largest land masses in red and one of the largest ocean exclusive economic zones here seen in blue. Yet, we are only 17th, ranked 17th in the world in terms of farm seafood production behind North Korea. North Korea outproduces us. <laughs> And this scale is a little misleading. Look closely, and you'll see that China produces 150 times more farm seafood than we do with less resources. Now, this leads to a $15 billion 
annual seafood trade deficit. It's quite a failure on our part. And seafood is one of our largest natural resource trade imbalances behind oil. So given that we are the breadbasket of the world and the leaders in producing food on land, why not in the oceans? Sadly, one of the main reasons is that we have a very complex and ill-defined legal and regulatory patchwork of policies that guide farming our oceans. And this is taken advantage of by well-meaning but misguided environmental organizations, in my opinion, that stand ready to litigate against any proposals for farming fish in public waters. Add to that, there are homeowners who romanticize the sight of lobster buoys and fishing boats and pleasure craft, but they'll fight tooth and nail against a shellfish farm in their view. Some fishermen, backed by powerful lobbying groups, protest aquaculture as an intrusion into their waters, and ill-informed politicians back them up. The regulatory hurdles, the protracted permitting process, it all squashes any entrepreneurial interest in offshore farming startups. So there have been a few examples. I want to point out that this not all doom and gloom here. There have been a few ocean farming pioneers who have persevered and slowly but surely come to a, a, a farming capacity in the ocean. But their progress has been really slow and difficult, especially to get a commercially viable size. Santa Barbara Mariculture. They've been farming mussels and oysters on a 10-acre lease for about 15 years part-time. They're the only offshore farm in California state waters. And it's really no wonder. It's taken them seven years to get permission to expand to 72 acres quite recently, a size just sufficient to financially support the now full-time owner and his family. By contrast, in the UK, the first offshore farm for mussels started operations in 2010 after just two years of permitting. Now, the, the family-run Offshore Shellfish Limited operates a 3,700-acre farm, employs 20 people, operates two boats, and they harvest about 4 million mussel-equivalent meals per year. And they're headed for 20 million in the next two to three years. This is really exciting development. This is real food capacity building in our oceans. So what's it going to take, and what changes are needed to make aquaculture an exciting and vibrant industry in this country? Well, first, we need to get past the double standards that accept the impacts of farming and commercial fishing as necessary evils, but vilify aquaculture for outdated information based on antibiotic use and environmental impacts, for instance. All food production systems have an environmental cost, but aquaculture is among the most sustainable ways to grow food. Second, the focus of our public policy, regulatory, and funding agencies needs to shift. Marine aquaculture deserves public support on par with commercial fisheries. And right now, marine aquaculture gets only 2% of the federal funds that are congressionally approved each year. That has to change. And third, we need to streamline aquaculture permitting. It takes a couple applications to a dozen agencies, and years of effort, unlike anything on land. It's unfair, it's short-sighted, and it just needs to be really improved. Yes, we need to locate those farms prudently, and yes, we need monitoring and reporting to safeguard the local environment, but it should not stand in the way of what all this industry has to offer. And finally, and soon, we need to build ocean farming enterprises that are capable of feeding an additional three billion mouths. That would solve the supply issue. But it's up to you to, to start building the demand. 
ask for farm seafood when you go out to eat or when you're ready to go buy fish at the market. The latest US rec dietary recommendations are for now eating two servings of seafood per week, double the current American average. In a fat seafood, includes a sizable proportion of farmed fish, shellfish, or seaweeds, it'll go a long way to, grow, to feeding our growing population and preserving the planet. We can change our way we think about and regulate aquaculture, and we can change our eating habits. The potential is huge. The opportunity is now. Aquaculture is the solution to meeting our growing food needs in a sustainable way that boosts jobs and the local economy, narrows our trade deficit, mitigates climate change, and sustains our earth and seas. We can start right here, right now. I'm taking a pledge to eat farmed seafood, mostly US, twice a week. And I trust you'll all join me. So for more information about the challenges and the opportunities for aquaculture, and some recipes too, go to our website, hui.edu aquaculture. Thank you. <laughs>